welcome to Leadership Talks, the inaugural edition with a very special man. If you go and read uh, Wikipedia, Google, multiple searches, you will see TV Narendran, head of Tata Steel, managing director and global CEO. But if you really want to understand the man, which is basically the purpose of this podcast, that's the whole idea, to go backstage with Mr. Narendran, to understand his philosophy, to celebrate what he has done, to know him better, and to know the vision of Tata Steel and Sport. I've been privileged. I've been privileged for almost about a decade now to know him really well, his family well, and come to feel inspired by him, by the work that he does, and by everything that he stands for. So first and foremost, Mr. Narendran, thank you very much for joining this inaugural edition of the Leadership Podcast. And the first question that I need to ask you, you know, when I I sort of requested you for support three years back, your first question was, are you focused on the grassroots? Are you only focused on cricket? And I will never forget that. And I said, yes. And you said, done. You did not even ask me anything. All you said was, are you doing this? And that sort of distinguishes you as a person. Uh, your support for me, Rev Sports, Women's Sports stands out. So my first first question, can you outline your macro vision and how you as a person and your organization, uh, Tata Steel, looks at sport and women's sport in general and particular? Thanks, Boria. Firstly, thank you for inviting me on the show. Thank you very much for your kind words of introduction. Uh, you know, really appreciate it. Uh, you know, sports has, for me personally, been a very important part of my life always. I have always been active uh, and to me, sports is uh, it's like a release, you know, it uh, helps you really not just improve your physical fitness, it actually helps you improve your mental fitness as well. So, you know, so to me, sports has always been an integral part of my life. I have experienced sports uh, and made great friends in sports, right? When you play with people, when you spend time with them, you become a more uh, social person because of the fact that you play different sports and engage with a lot of people. But that much, that's to address the question that you asked about sports and how it is important to me as a person. But I think what is even more important, it's less important about sports and me and more important, but more important about Tata Steel and sports. And I think Tata Steel has had a rich history of supporting sports, uh, including our uh, first uh, chairman, Thorab Tata, uh, you know, uh, being the person who underwrote the expenses of the team which went to the Olympics, Paris Olympics in 1920, right? So things like that. Uh, Naval Tata, who was Mr. Ratan Tata's father, uh, was known for his support of hockey, you know, and uh, hence the Naval Tata Hockey Academy that we have. So we have a rich history of Tata leaders supporting sports over the years. Tata Steel as a company has carried on the tradition. Uh, and for us, sports is a very important way to connect to the community. It is less about the branding we get out of the association with sports, more about what is the good we can do through the to the community through sports. So you will see that most of our work is work on the grassroots. It's more multi-year, multi-decadal kind of work. It's about building the capabilities, etc. And hence, my question to you about is it grassroots, etc. Because for us, it has to add some value to the communities who are impacted by what we do. You know, it's not just about doing an event where you lend your name and after that everyone forgets about it. It has to create lasting value. So that's how we look at it. Exactly, exactly why we kind of kind of connected because and that sort of relates to my second question that there is a lot of work that uh, Tata Steel is doing also with parasports. So when I asked you that, you know, I want to work in the Paralympic domain and, and that's where I got support from you. Not many Indian corporates come forward and our work. Uh, during the Paris Paralympics has kind of now been appreciated by the country globally. India won 29 medals in the Paris Paralympics, top 20 of the world, possibility of making the top 10 in LA. How do you look at this and, and, and the Tata Steel contribution to promoting uh, disability sport, to kind of making India an equal and a more sensitive society? Your thoughts on Paralympics and Parasport? Absolutely. I think it's again a section of community who has who's disadvantaged, has not been getting the support. Uh, so it fits into the Tata Steel ethos of lending a helping hand wherever it can. And uh, also Tata Steel as an organization wants to be more and more inclusive. So we want more and more differently able people in our teams. Uh, we're doing a lot of work, for instance, on transgenders, you know, getting them into our workforce, 
Uh, for the differently abled, we also have a program called SABAL, which uh, is an annual awards function that we hold uh, for people who are differently able but are talented. They may be fantastic singers or actors or dancers or musicians or whatever. You know, so we do this annual event because we want to celebrate their talent, their capabilities, give them a platform to really showcase, uh, you know, what they can really do. So, so it kind of fits into that ethos of saying that how can I work more closely with the differently able people? How can I celebrate their achievements and how can I help them realize their aspirations? And uh, what you're doing helps us do that. And I think, um, like you said, uh, society uh, is not giving them the attention that they deserve. And I'm glad that that's changing. And I think all of us need to do what we can uh, to help make that. And I must compliment you for the work that you are doing, because I think uh, uh, you're using your equity, the platform that you've created to again bring a lot of uh, understanding of the subject. And I also like the articles that you write on this uh, during the Paralympics. I used to read uh, your articles and I think all that is very important because sometimes it's about creating that consciousness. It's not that people are unwilling to support, but they may not be aware that this cause needs supporting. Yeah. So, so I think all of us need to do a bit. Very important words because during the Olympics, for example, Mr. Narendra, there were about 50, 60 Indian media. Sadly, during the Paralympics, there were seven of us, five of us from our company and two others from two other media houses. And when these people would win, they would actually ask, Ki, sir, kyun hai? Hmm. Kyun hai? Ye discrimination abhi bhi aise kyun ho hai? And then we see the prime minister getting in, corporates getting in and them getting celebrated. And you feel Ki, yes, India is changing when they become stars. They get invited to shows uh, and, and that's when sort of they start getting money, getting recognition. I think that's that's where we need to do far more than we are at the moment. Moving on, your your own life. I mean, and, and here I can say from experience, some of the marathons that I host, I see you running the 10K every year. Last year, I remember I went to you, you said I did not do well because I was 71 minutes up and I was looking at you and thinking, what is this man saying to me? And amazing. And, and that's why I said you inspire. Tell me, what are the life lessons that you have as a corporate leader imbibed from sport and how that kind of helped you? Because I'm sure there were many adversities. Did sport kind of help you in, in your own career? Yeah, I think, uh, like I said, sports has always been a very important part of my life uh, right from my childhood. I've always played all the sports uh, that I could, whether I'm good at it or not. You know, so it doesn't matter. It's always uh, due to learn. When I moved to Calcutta in the 80s, I learned to row, for instance. Uh, and I used to row in the rowing club. I learned, uh, you know, I used to play squash. I used to do lawn bowling, you know, which again is unique to Calcutta and RCGC. <laughs> so things like that. So it's there's always an interest in learning new sports, learning new things, meeting new people through sports. And sports is a great leveler, right? I mean, you... Uh, so, in that, uh, when I run in Calcutta, who cares if I'm the CEO or not, right? I'm one of the 15,000 runners or whatever, right? And all of us are the same. Uh, I mean, not all of us are the same. Some are very good at it. Some of us are uh, hanging on. But, so it's a great leveler, right? It teaches you humility. It teaches you the importance of discipline. It teaches you the importance of teamwork, particularly if it's a team sport. It teaches you the importance of uh, dealing with disappointments resilience, tenacity, and all of those are very useful in corporate life, right? So I think, uh, you know, it teaches you so many things. I, I look at, I keep reminding people, you know, uh, if you look at the captain of the Indian cricket team, for instance, you know, I mean, Rohit Sharma is 36 or 37, but typically if you are in your 20s and you're the captain and you have thousands of people watching you, having opinions, you have many of your predecessors publicly sharing their opinions. You know, it requires a lot of mental toughness to deal with all that, right? And at the same time, perform, you know, under that kind of pressure. So I tell people, even if today I'm the CEO of Tata Steel and every night on television, five of my predecessors were analyzing the decisions I took. I don't know whether I would be able to function as effectively as I am today, right? So I think there's a lot to admire in sports and the pressures that young people have to deal with uh, when they do well in sports. And I think corporate leaders have a lot to learn or anyone in a corporate life can learn a lot from sports. Mr. Narendra, this is kind of moving away a little bit. I mean, all of us in our in our own domains have failed many times. I mean, I, I fail every day, right? And I take my lessons, I learn, I get up, I move. 
at times i feel why am i doing it why do i have to run to every corporate they will not understand uh, supporting olympic and paralympic sport they'll turn back and say what are you doing and feel deflated and demoralized and depressed but then i pick myself up and say no no i've got to do this how do you deal with failure i mean how do you kind of deal with adversity can you because i really need to understand from you i'm sure you you had failure i'm sure you've had to deal with many many more adversities than any one of us so how do you deal with failure yeah so i think failure is part of everyone's life right i mean people assume that uh, successful people have not had failures i mean you are you are only seeing the success you're not seeing the failures they had along the way right and sometimes uh, you know the success makes up for some of those failures so you don't uh, think about it so much but yes i think uh, everyone has to build that ability to deal with failure because everyone will face failure right for me personally it's about accepting that accepting that there will be disappointments there will be failures so firstly you should not be stressed out when it comes your way because uh, it's inevitable right so first you accept that secondly you everyone should have their own coping mechanism uh, i mean you that's why i always tell people you should be passionate about things beyond your specific work area because that that's your coping mechanism i like music i like sports uh, i like to spend time with my family so if i have a failure or a disappointment i go there to help uh, you know kind of uh, get back the uh, energy that is required to bounce back you know so i think everyone needs to find some people would read a book some people would do some gardening some people would cook or whatever you know so so you need to f- see what is it that helps you kind of build back the energy and strength that is required to bounce back right because uh, i mean uh, your success depends on ability to bounce back from failure rather than anything else right and I, i think that's a good capability to build and that calls for some reflection but i'm sure everyone can find their own way out important words because the the thing is you know no day is perfect so i kind of seek perfection in an imperfect day that every single day you have to try and yeah. be perfect in an imperfect day and that kind of brings me to my next question which is connected to this how do you also deal you you've told me about failure how do you deal with self doubt because when you take a call you are in a board meeting your calls influence so many more people now you have a different responsibility of global steel and and that's another one second indian to head that body uh, tata steel one of the greatest companies in the world so many different employees different stakeholders how do you deal with self doubt how do you deal with decision making because again in sport that's what i take take olympics i thought lakshya sen should have won a medal but he was riddled with self doubt satvik and chirag should have won a medal they were one game up 8 3 up i was in the stadium uh, take the paralympics uh, in multiple we we had so many fourth place finishes if you are able to come fourth you can win a medal you got the talent really there is an element of self doubt how do you deal with self doubt so again that's something you deal with through experience i think uh... uh obviously uh, 30 years back i had far more self doubt than i have today right so you know so when you but it's a question of you know how do you strengthen yourself mentally just like you strengthen yourself physically right so it's it's something that you need to do uh through reflection and i think some people for some people that self doubt gets triggered very easily and for some people that self doubt gets triggered uh not so easily right so how do you kind of uh, get into that space you know when you really look at very successful sports people you know i remember i don't uh, i think it was andy rodick uh, playing somebody in the australian open it was a five setter and when the commentator interviewed the person who lost after five sets and asked did you at any time feel that uh, uh, i mean the guy who won did you at any time feel that you would lose he said no he was so shocked with the because that thought never crossed his mind even though there were many set points he fought with he never thought he would lose you know so i think that's that's as important as a physical fitness i'm sure there are very good training methods for that etc but i think it's important uh, uh, to build that capability so of course i do have self doubt sometimes but much less than i used to have 10 years back 20 years back 30 years back because i worked on it right of course it also calls for a lot of preparation right i mean you have to prepare uh, for me if i have prepared well i have very little self doubt right uh, so that preparation is very important then after that 
in my job and in any sports person's job i guess uh, in my job as a ceo you have to take decisions and often times with incomplete information or imperfect information but you have to take a decision not taking a decision is not an option right and some of them will go bad some of them will be right but uh, then you learn from that and move on so i think it's uh, it's a journey that you get better at i will never say that you reach the destination but uh, through reflection through thinking through what went wrong analyzing what went wrong and working on it so that you don't make those mistakes again preparing well for the decisions that you need to take i think uh, you can address it systematically preparation that's the word that you used three four times i'll take that because you know you be the best prepared be the best version of yourself and then whatever happens uh, right. one one sport sport is also now soft power and and we know that one sport where tata steel has consistently sort of kind of supported and we are seeing a revolution now in india is chess look at the olympiad uh, gold for the for the men gold for the women tata steel chess is round the corner uh, your thoughts on 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 supporting chess and we are we are currently seeing perhaps the indian decade of chess because all these guys are my friends and i keep talking to them the kind of confidence i see in a pragyananda or a gukesh who's playing the world championship or a uh, not just anand all these guys arjun erigiasi i find yeah. it fascinating your thoughts on that yeah i think uh, uh, tata steel has had an association of chess in india off and on let me put it that way i think uh, Vishwanath Anand told us that the first major tournament he played in India was sponsored by Tata Steel I think in the 80s in Calcutta okay Dibindu Barua was part of Tata Steel for a very long period of time right so we've had that association with sports but a deeper association was actually through our subsidiary in Netherlands which was not a subsidiary till 19 I mean till 2008 but Tata Steel Netherlands hosts this famous tournament in Wykensee which is a village next to a plant which is seen like a, it's the 88th edition i think which is going to go on now on january it's held in january every year people like magnus carlsen were actually uh, you know came into fame from there right and uh, so that's seen as a wimbledon of chess in some sense you know a lot of chess players want to be seen there have played there etc etc so that's an association which we've had we inherited we kind of acquired that uh, association through our acquisition of tata steel europe and tata steel netherlands but again uh, in india since so inspired by that we said let's have a world class chess competition in india as well and i think uh, vishwanath anand has worked with us he has seen what we do in vikensi and since for the last 6 years as you are aware we doing this uh, thing in uh, calcutta which is coming up in november and again i think uh, the other in- important thing we did and it's in the context of what we discussed earlier this is probably the only chess tournament where you have the same prize money for men and women okay so we said uh, we have to do it like that you know why not and we've done that so i think we have all the names that you said playing there including all the women uh, coming in magnus carlsen is also coming in in november so i will looking forward to that and i think it's a game uh, like you said where india is really poised to dominate over this decade and it's wonderful to see so much of talent uh, uh, emerging uh, you know uh, in different parts of india which is wonderful Yeah and inspired by that I mean from the first year of our own uh, community football tournament it's equal prize money I remember you telling me that yeah. uh, and in fact I just uh, will digress for 30 seconds when year 1 we said equal prize money and and the women's team who are all tribals they they started crying and we said why are you crying they said never ever has it happened in that we get equal prize money we get even 10% of what the men get and some of the girls by the way you will be very pleased to know they are now getting iwl contracts from our community Fantastic. football tournament supported by tata steel so they have now got careers they are playing the iwl this year for professional teams so i can see real legacy happening no, that's Mr. moving a little bit uh, i i kind of want to understand you know you 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 presided over india's corporate landscape you've seen narratives change what is your thought on digital technology companies like ours which are trying to use a media agnostic world using digital tech to to kind of reach out because now you don't need that kind of infrastructure you can you can use digital to make a make a narrative or shape a narrative whether it's olympics paralympics put bodies on ground make change your thoughts on digital technology and how it can help indian sport and the indian ecosystem so i think uh, digital is uh, uh... is already a very important part of our personal and professional lives right and it's going to continue to evolve particularly more recently with the 
advent of artificial intelligence and its various applications which are evolving, I think it's going to change everything significantly. So if I look at digital itself, right, I mean, first and foremost, you get a lot more information uh, which helps you. I mean, even if you look at if you look at cricket, the most followed sport in India, and because of technologies today, you are able to analyze threadbare every bowler, every batsman, every fielder. You can plan and prepare much better. As individuals, I mean, the Apple Watch I wear gives me so much information on my running and whether I've slowed down or where have I slowed down and, you know, what's my heart rate and so many things. So it helps you. Whereas I remember 15 years back, I used to run with something around my chest you know, which used to give me a lot of that input. Today, it's so convenient. It's on my watch, on my phone, you know. So technology helps you understand, helps sports people understand themselves and understand each other much better. So you can again prepare better for yourself and for others. The second part is, I think, uh, driving efficiency in many things that we do. I mean, today, a classic example, not from the world of sport, is uh, from the world of travel is Digi Yatra, right? So with just that technology, it's so simple, you can walk through, uh, you know, the airport and save so much of time, right? So similarly, I'm sure we can have technologies to allow access into stadiums and do many other things, right? So I think technology will also help it more efficiently. And the last thing, what you just said, I think uh, it helps you scale up without spending so much money, right? So the work that you're doing, uh, the audiences that you seek, the platforms that you want to create, and uh, it will also blur... Uh, the boundary lines between different businesses uh, so that uh, you know you can do so much uh, through digital platforms so i think it's a, uh, it's a huge opportunity for us to you know do a lot of things very differently and for the benefit of the people uh, who are involved yeah uh, how are you backstage i mean we see mr narendran as the leader corporate leader aura photographs television print summits Travel. How are you? How do you unwind? Do you read, travel, books? Yeah, yeah. Uh, spent uh, time with Ruchi. Spent time at family. How are you back? What is? Okay, three days of holiday. What is Mr. Narendra going to do? <laughs> First and foremost, uh, you know, I, I I like to be the same person I was 20, 30 years back. Right? These positions come and go. Right? So to me, being what you are uh, shouldn't change irrespective of what position you will occupy, right? So, uh, staying grounded and for that, my family is very important. My family also ensures that I stay grounded, right? Ruchi and my daughter Nikki and everyone else, right? So, that's very important for me. Secondly, I love to read. I love sports. Uh, unfortunately, time is... Uh, I don't really get those three-day holidays uh, unless I take a 10-day break and go somewhere because weekends are also quite busy. So, uh, so I don't have that luxury. But yes, I do catch up... Uh, on music, uh, uh, you know, I play the drums. I learned to play the drums over 20 years back. I said I shouldn't have any regrets in life. So I have a kit at home in Jamshedpur and uh, I use that when I'm in Jamshedpur on the weekends. I read books as many as I can, whenever I can. So I always have a book uh, with me somewhere or the other in my bag or in the house that I'm in or whatever. Uh, I run every morning, so that's my morning time. So I get my run in the mornings or walk or run or whatever. I, I'm out typically at 5.45 in the morning. So I get my uh, dose of uh, the exercise as well. So I think uh, these things keep me relaxed. And then uh, friends from the past, colleagues, Tata Steel, as you know, is like a one big family. So a lot of my colleagues are my friends. And so, uh, you know, that also helps a lot. So... I love dogs. I used to have two dogs. Uh, I lost both of them over a period of time. I have not kept one because of my schedule and I feel guilty if I am not able to spend enough time with them. But uh, those are the things that help me relax. Quite a few similarities. Early mornings, uh, dogs, <laughs> books, uh, not drums, but that gives me an idea and I am going to put you on the spot. Last two years, I have been literally after you. Come and inaugurate my conclave. Come and inaugurate because you support it. You are the presenting partner. Uh, and it's India's best conclave. I'm saying it on record, 35 athletes, 30 athletes physically, some more online, uh, all stakeholders, government, policy, federations, all together. I don't think it happens in India. Next year, March again, same dates. Uh, uh, the idea is Mr. Narendran will start with a five-minute dumb thing. I will get ready. <laughs> no, no. That, that okay. may discourage me from coming. No, no, but I'll try to come there. But, but, but sir, please, on record, I'm saying, 
kindly yes. i mean i've already reached out to sarvesh for this sure. you you will love it if you come and inaugurate the conclave it'll it'll be excellent sure i will certainly try and do that i uh, you know i'll work with uh, you and sarvesh and figure that out i'll certainly try and be there this time sometimes my schedule is not entirely in my hands that's what happens but i'll certainly try and uh, uh, be there this time and because i've heard so much about it i know you're doing a great job and uh, it'll be my privilege to be there if i can yeah. quick quick backstage question favorite cricketer favorite olympic sports person <laughs> favorite cricketer i mean of course uh, you know i think uh, you know if i look back and I, if i let's say not name an indian cricketer i think vip richards for mm-hmm. the sheer attitude you know when you say self doubt i don't think he ever had any self doubt right you ask about that so the confidence with and, and the swagger with which he used to come and play i think i mean that was iconic right and i think uh, that is i think among the indian cricketers of course i think uh, kapil sunil gavaskar gundappa vishwanath was my favorite when i was growing up i used to love the first test match in my life i watched was australia india and bangalore and gundappa vishwanath scored a century there so that was was fantastic to watch so he was my favorite at that time uh, you know and one of the best human beings also yeah yeah and dr vishwanath and and one of the best human beings that you can come across very dear friend of mine and and sir we one should go and ask clive lloyd how you control sir we in the dressing room at some point you must do that incredible stories how sir we was in the dressing room and how sir clive managed to control <laughs> sir but olympic sport olympic sport your favorite sports sports person well uh, you you're saying over a period of time Any, any, anyone. I mean, Indian and foreign. I mean, somebody that you really loved watching, or you love watching. Well, uh, I think in the early, earlier part, Carl Lewis was somebody I remember uh, watching quite a bit. Uh, uh, Phelps, the swimmer. I mean, incredible uh, champion. I think uh, some of these guys were really uh, outstanding. And uh, of course, amongst the Indians, the shooters, the archery. I mean, for for me. Uh, you know what any indian has done is commendable because i think uh, more than anything else m- uh, most of our sports people have come up against all odds and i think whatever uh, of course the hockey teams of the past were again incredible again i those days i used to listen to the commentary on hockey because uh, you know we used to hear it on the radio etc but uh, i think uh, that's uh, that's i think i guess of course who else yeah tennis? i think sorry uh, someone from tennis oh Which tennis of course uh, i think uh, again uh, uh, you're talking olympics anything i mean you yeah. because you mentioned tennis earlier that's why i just oh, asked again tennis i've grown up watching john bog uh, so again i used to admire his temperament you know again somebody who was fantastic i mean those famous mo- matches with uh, jimmy connors and McEnroe and all that. So that those I grew up watching all that. So he was my favorite for a pretty long time. Uh, uh, of course, from India, Leander Pace has been outstanding. Mahesh Bhupati, Leander Pace, they've all done us proud. Sanya has done us proud. Uh, of course, Vijay Amrit Raj was a favorite at that point in time, and uh, right. So we used to hear about him. Naresh Kumar used to give that commentary from Wimbledon, and we used to listen to that. So I think uh, you know a lot of fond memories. Uh, Uh, more recently i think uh, djokovic all said and done while everyone loves federer and nadal more but i think it's incredible what he has achieved mm-hmm. so you know if you just look at you know he has achieved what he has achieved when his peers were nadal and uh, federer mm-hmm. you know so it's not like when sampras was dominating he was dominating you know you couldn't think of too many very strong players Uh, at that time with him some were fading in and some were fading out etc but you look at what uh, djokovic has achieved uh, you know so uh, unfortunately people love him less than the other two but i think purely from a, if you look at it from a sports point of view i think he's really a champion i think this djokovic point is 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 a fantastic point i mean this is so important that however much he was hated he kept being resilient i i know my time is up but it's been fabulous half an hour mr narendra i mean loved it uh, uh, tried to understand you better i've got a, a kind of assurance from you for the conclave which makes my kali puja what it is so fantastic <laughs> as far as that is concerned but love talking to you and and once again thank you for gracing the inaugural episode of leadership talks with the best of india's corporate leaders look forward to catching up with you physically wish you the very best of health happiness family 
everything and maybe during the kolkata uh, pro cam run uh, which i will again host i look forward to seeing you run there and catch up but definitely look forward to welcoming you back at the conclave thank you very thanks. much for thanks boria for having me and thank you so much uh, for your kind words thank you thank you so much thanks a lot